Each and every individual cooperative knows exactly what happens within their municipalities and who is affected. And this was for us also very important to have a transparent solution. The data evaluation will be done not by Munich Re and not by the insurance, by the cooperative. It will be done, of course, by an independent consultant. This is to ensure that we have an objective solution. I think as I have explained, explained to you now how what we have done and what we wanted to achieve, I think a lot of the questions addressed has more or less, has more or less now been explained how we want to pass on and how we avoid, for example, basis risks and how we want to more or less reduce the transaction costs. A lot of these questions have been now been solved and uh, um, I'm very much looking for your questions later on. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, we'll move on to Rajesh, please. Good afternoon, panelists and uh, uh, all the participants. Uh, there are some very interesting points which have come up in uh, earlier speakers. And uh, uh, my company, which uh, uh, works behind the scene on data and technology issues for both uh, uh, private sector organizations uh, uh, as well as agencies like UN, World Bank, etc. Uh, I'll highlight some of the issues uh, that uh, that come uh, come across and how they are being dealt with. On uh, um, one of the one of the panelists mentioned about uh, reaching to the poor people, and uh, while uh, Dr. Uh, Koli Rao's agriculture insurance company have already reached 25 million, that is still a small portion of of the penetration they need to make in the country. Uh, their difficulty comes from uh, collection of small amount of premium from a very large number of farmers. Uh, recently, there is a very interesting debate going on uh, in India related to um, microfinance, uh, where uh, the aim is to reach to poor, and the debate is happening, is it a, is it a social uh, uh, is it a social phenomena or is it a commercial or a business phenomena? Uh, normally, if uh, one of us in the room would approach a bank in India for some kind of a, a loan or a finance, generally they should be able to get finance at an annual interest rate of between 8 to 9%. Uh, however, through the microfinance uh, process, when poor of poor uh, farmers, when they get the, uh, uh, get the finance, good part is now they are able to access the finance which wasn't earlier available without microfinance. But they normally get that finance at the cost of somewhere in the range of 25 to 30 percent uh, of annual interest rate. So the people who needed it the most actually is getting uh, it at the most expensive price. Uh, so the question uh, here is, will, will the technology leapfrog would help us reach those poor and increase our penetration? Um, it, it, there are a lot, lot of breakthrough uh, uh, through thoughts and experiments which are going on, um, particularly uh, with the penetration of mobile phones to almost each uh, village and farmer and attempts being made can mobile phone actually become an identity of a person and and a vehicle to uh, to access finance through through that uh, through that communication mechanism things like this uh, while they may not directly be on a climate change agenda but uh, but if we are able to bring those costs and a reach to those people uh, is uh, will make this program much much more successful. Uh, the second hurdle which we face when we are uh, working through various agencies in uh, uh, helping them uh, helping them uh, quantify their risk, helping them assess uh, assess their risk, is access to data. We talked about data. We talked about technology, whether remote sensing, geospatial technologies can can they be an answer? Who owns the data? Again, very interesting uh, phenomena happening outside of climate change is a significant amount of land reform programs in, uh, in most of the emerging economies in most of the de developing world. Uh, 
through these uh, land reform programs, clear title of land, mapping of land, land parcels, identification, locational intelligence are, are continuously being built. Uh, similarly, many of other infrastructure development projects generate fair amount of base geographic location information. Uh, however, uh, like, uh, like m many other forums, the, uh, the interagency coordinations make these data accessible quite difficult. And uh, uh, th through agencies like uh, UN or World Bank, who uh, many times act as a catalyst in, in uh, penetrating these programs or influence the policies at a national level, if they, they could also be a little more stringent about using the national or a regional or a state uh, data resources which have already been funded through the taxpayers' money would, uh, would make uh, the product development, the product accuracy and the reach in these subjects uh, m much more accessible, much, uh, n not only does it save uh, a fair amount of cost, we get, get, get accurate data and we get timely data. So uh, all of these pieces, uh, along with some of the other technology platform and reach work which uh, we, uh, we continue to do behind the scene, uh, we hope will indirectly help us from a commercial world achieve some of the change and adoption agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, last but not least, uh, Dr. Romani. Uh, thank you, uh, Richard. Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am actually uh, an odd man out uh, uh, in this uh, panel because uh, all of them represent uh, financial institutions. I represent uh, farmers. I'm a scientist, basically. And uh, instead of uh, probably uh, responding or answering some of the queries raised by Mire, I think uh, I may be raising some questions. When we talk of adaptation to climate change, it involves cost. And uh, when we say cost and climate change, morning session, uh, it was uh, the, the bottom uh, thing, you know, line of that uh, session was that the climate change affects the poorest of the poor most. That means uh, we are uh, dealing with people who do not have enough uh, money power. And then their uh, uh, rebounds capacity is very, very low. That means they cannot you know, bounce back once there is a disaster. Now, I think, no, we are uh, talking in terms of adaptation of climate change to judge people. And uh, whatever I'm going to talk uh, today is mainly my experience on lac production. Lac is a product of India. India is the leading producer uh, of lac, which has got a lot of applications. And uh, one of the things which uh, I realized, uh, we have been talking about climate change for quite some time now, temperature increase, how it will affect surgeons of pests, and then erratic production, lowering of productivity. Now we are seeing it happening. One of the lac crops which is produced in summer, we find that uh, its contribution, both relative and even in absolute terms, has gone down. And uh, seeing this, we try to have two approaches. One is to protect the crop through insurance so that the farmer will run little risk or lesser risk. Another thing is uh, some kind of resilient uh, mechanism by giving probably some other insect which will be able to uh, tolerate the, the climate change. And the second one is working. We have suggested an insect which is res, uh, less responsive to this climate change and uh, we find that uh, that particular crop is performing very well. And uh, we had one experience uh, of developing the crop insurance for the summer crop of lac, which I told you, which is a commercial crop, and we found it is most affected. And uh, that was an enlightenment for me in the sense that uh, the, the firm ICAC Lombard uh, was I think, really a, a very adventurous venture by that particular insurance company, working out a product and uh, reaching people. Two things which I want to mention, one Mr. Rao, which he mentioned, that when we design a product for Indian farmer, uh, it may not be a good idea to wholly subsidize it. That means the farmer must bear some component of the cost. So it, uh, it was a subsidy through an NGO. 
and uh, developing the product itself as uh, eye opener for me uh, one thing is data the data was simply not available for the kind of regions we were working for we were developing for a cluster of villages in different places the weather data was not available and they wanted uh, data for at least 25 to 30 years which we didn't have at all then we came out with some practical way out for that and then we designed the product in the product desi uh, design one thing which i realized was that uh, the company was uh, trying to minimize its risk and uh, ultimately you know it was a trade off between the premium and the risk coverage and uh, we were trying to represent the farmers interest and uh, they were trying to protect their own interest ultimately when we arrived at a premium and it was you can understand what uh, was a trade off and uh, the product was launched and uh, of course it didn't take off much to the extent we had desired but uh, i'm sure that this kind of products need to be developed and popularized and uh, mr dr kalra talked about the penetration of uh, insurance i think that is what we should focus on uh, the products are good the thinking is good the planning is good what is uh, needed is uh, you know penetration going into the field and then tackling lot of ground level problems because we cannot simply ignore when we are designing a product we have to reach uh, dr kalra just said that uh, even collecting the premium is not so easy uh, reaching them collecting the premium and then paying what uh, dr thomas said you know when uh, we design a product when there is a disaster we have to ensure that uh, the the insurance cover is paid immediately to the farmer because he needs that uh, financial return immediately not that you know the kind of mechanism which we have where there could be so so many questions asked and then the forms to be filled and then some of the requirements to be fulfilled and then ultimately it is paid by then it may be too late because again i want to emphasize that we are dealing with people who are really resource constrained and whenever there is a disaster they will not be able to come out of it very quickly and then what is needed i feel that uh, we have good plans and schemes uh penetration improving the penetration and uh, second thing is we should be proactive in the sense that uh, we cannot expect the farmers to come to the the insurance company or the financing institution for support we have to go to them we have to go and reach them which is again not easy it's difficult because farmers may be highly skeptical about the kind of schemes which we have because of their own past experience so it's 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 uh, you know reaching them it is educating them because you know people are not even aware of such schemes you know whether it is finance or even insurance they don't have insurance for themselves how do you expect them to insure their crops it's not easy so we have to educate them we have to reach them and uh, two areas i think you know which i feel we should focus on is uh, funding the crops that means uh, microfinance again uh, Uh, rajesh told us that uh, the interest rates are very high i'm not very versed with this i think this is one thing which we should address and one of the things which i suggested was that you know there should be some kind of government subsidy for this kind of insurance uh, policies and uh, uh, dr rao says that there is a 50% subsidy in india which is uh, equally shared between the state and the central government am i right uh, yes policies are there but thing is we are not able to really reach and uh, that is what is required second is insurance i think when we are talking in terms of adaptation to climate change we should uh, lay more stress on insurance developing insurance products for different regions because you know in india we have a wide range of climates that is a challenge again a product which is developed for one state may not be applicable to another state so we have a very complex problem of developing products which may be region specific and then crop specific i take my own example no my own uh, uh, the insect the crop i am on which i am working the rack insect has got four crops we have two kinds of insects having different life cycle period we have a summer crop we have a winter crop another strain we have a rainy season crop and where there is a summer crop so that means developing four different products for just one particular commodity and then the with, with the kind of commodities we have just you can imagine the complexities and it took us probably around 6 months to develop a product for one particular crop and if you have to develop for all other you can understand we took up that one because that was the highly risky one 
and uh, 